Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to the channel, where we explore the hidden microcosmos of sea monkeys and other instant pets. So I've just returned home from my work down in Antarctica, which means I can finally start making videos for you guys again. Um, so today I'll be doing my very first Q&A, answering some of your questions, so let's get right into it. How was your time away? Did you get any great shots? And on sea monkeys, can you feed them purely with phytoplankton? And if so, how much and how often? So for those of you who are familiar with my background, I've been working as a polar photographer for the last eight years, and I just got back from Antarctica where I was working for the last two months. I had a really great time down there this season, but I think it will probably be my final visit for a while, because for the next year or two, I really want to focus on this channel because I've really been enjoying making these videos for you guys. Working in Antarctica is always a real privilege, um, and I always come home from my work down there uh, with some great photos that I'm really happy with. So if you're interested in seeing some of my polar work, um, it's best for you just to go and have a look over on my Instagram account. So I'll put like uh, my handle down at the bottom of the screen so you guys know how to find me. Now regarding the question about feeding sea monkeys phytoplankton, which is also called microalgae, yes you can feed it to them exclusively, which is what I personally do with pretty much all of my tanks now, including this ocean volcano tank here. And my general rule for feeding them is as soon as the water becomes clear, that's when I know to feed them again. And that usually works out to around two to four times a week. The next question kind of carries on from the first one in regards to feeding. Do you still need to feed your sea monkeys if you have algae naturally growing in the tank? Um, this is a great question and it's one that I get quite often here on YouTube in the comments. Um, the simple answer is yes, you do. So any algae that's naturally growing in the tank will supplement the diet of your sea monkeys, but it won't replace their food entirely. So you should, you should still feed them sea monkey growth food, but you can simply reduce the feeding frequency because they'll also be eating the algae that's growing in the tank. How did you get into sea monkeys? I want to, but my friends might think I'm strange. Um, so this is a good question. I think like most people, I got into sea monkeys as a kid, and I've kind of always been interested in animals and biology, so they're always kind of something that's just kind of piqued my interest. I remember as a kid that I had a lot of trouble keeping them alive though, and I think that's why my interest with them has kind of persisted over the years because I really wanted to figure out how can I keep these little guys alive. Now it's definitely true that keeping sea monkeys as pets, especially as an adult, is often seen as like a little bit strange. But my kind of general rule for life is that if you're doing something that you enjoy and you're not hurting anybody in the process, then just go ahead and do it. I think life is too short to worry about what other people are thinking. And, um, and the hobby is growing very quickly at the moment, and it's a very welcoming community as well. So I encourage you to try them out and, um, and join the community. Okay, another feeding question. Um, the water in my sea monkey tank has gone cloudy slash murky. Is this from overfeeding? Most likely, yeah. Um, I think we often have a tendency to overfeed our sea monkeys. And I think this is for a number of reasons, but one of them is that the, the amount we feed them is just so little, especially compared to how much food we consume we often think it can't possibly be enough to sustain them. Um, but sea monkeys are very resilient animals. Obviously, they're tiny as well, so they don't need much food. But I think, really, you could probably leave a colony alone for one or two weeks without feeding them, and they'd still be okay. They'd still survive after that time. So it's definitely much easier to overfeed than it is to underfeed your sea monkeys. So the general rule is that if the water is cloudy, just leave it. You don't have to feed them. And if the water becomes clear, then you can give them a little bit more food again. How do you tell the genders apart before they have eggs? So this is actually quite easy to answer, and that's because brine shrimp have very clear sexual dimorphism, which means the physical differences between the males and the females is very clear. Um, so in general, the females will be longer than the males, and they'll also develop an egg sac at the base of their abdomen, while the males have very large clasping antennae attached to the front of their head that they use to hold on to the females while mating. So really the best way to tell them apart is just to look at the front of the head and if they have large antennae attached then you know that it's a male and if not it's most likely a female. I think I might get sea monkeys. How do I take care of them? Um, so this is another great question and one I get asked a lot but it's not one that I can answer really easily or quickly in a video like this. I did make a video though a few months ago called how to keep your sea monkeys alive which I'll leave a link to down in the description of this video. Um, that video's got all of my best tips for how to look after them. How do you know so much about sea monkeys? Um, well, I've been interested in them ever since I was a kid, and I'm the kind of person who likes to kind of hyper-focus on a topic when I get interested in it. 
So I've done a lot of reading about them and I did a lot of experimenting with them as well to try and figure out kind of what works and how to keep them alive. Um, and through those experiments, I failed a lot of times, but I did eventually manage to figure out what does work and what doesn't work. And I'm now at the point where I think I've got a pretty good idea of kind of how to sustain a colony and keep it going long term. I think it's really important to maintain a teachable spirit though. Um, and what I mean by that is, even though I do have a, a decent understanding of how to keep them alive, I think I still do have quite a lot that I can still learn about brine shrimp. So I'm still always looking for ways that I can improve. So I've got two questions here which are quite similar. Do you have any plans on extending the channel to topics other than sea monkeys? And will you ever do a video on other members of the class Branchiopoda, like Triops? Um, so yeah, definitely. In fact, my initial idea for this channel was never supposed to be exclusively sea monkeys, even though that has kind of been the focus of the channel for the last year or so. So I will still continue making sea monkey content next year, but I'm also going to start showing you guys some other species as well, like fairy shrimp and triops. Um, I think the focus will continue to be on kind of the smaller animals of the microcosmos though, just because that's what I'm most interested in, that's what I'm the most passionate about, and I think that's what I can make the best quality videos about. Do you have a favorite tank? Um, so I've reviewed quite a few different sea monkey tanks over the last year, and I will be doing a bunch more next year as well. I've got a whole lot in the pipeline that I'm working on for you guys. Um, I think so far though, my favorite is probably the, the sea monkeys on Mars tank, which you might be able to see on the shelf behind me there. I just think the design of the tank is really great. I think they did an awesome job with the paintwork, and yeah, it all just came together really well. Do you think anyone can make a YouTube video following out of any obscure thing, such as yourself? Um, so that, yeah, I think starting this YouTube channel, my biggest hesitation with it was, I wasn't sure if there would be an audience for it. And that's because there wasn't really anybody else making content like this on YouTube. My proof of concept though, was I started making videos on TikTok, and those started performing quite well, and that kind of let me know that there is a potential audience for this, and it was worth trying out, which is basically what I'm doing with the channel at the moment. And so far, the reception from you guys has been really good, and the channel's been growing really well. To answer the question though, um, can anybody make a successful YouTube channel out of an obscure topic, the way I kind of have uh, with Sea Monkeys? Um, I think the answer to that is definitely yes, but you have to be willing to put in the time and be constantly trying to improve. Um, YouTube, at least from my experience, is very much a marathon, not a sprint. And it does take a lot of work. And, and even now, I still very much feel like a novice. And I'm working every day to try and improve my craft and get better and make these, these videos better for you guys. So yeah, I think anyone can make a successful YouTube channel, but you've got to be willing to put in the work to get there. Why do my sea monkeys die so fast, despite following the instructions? Um, this is something that I personally experienced my first time with sea monkeys, and I think it's also something that a lot of people experience, is that maybe your sea monkeys will hatch, and then uh, they'll only survive for a few days, or maybe you can only get the first generation to adulthood, but the subsequent generations born into the tank don't live very long. Um, there's a number of reasons for this, but the two main ones that I've kind of identified is one is overfeeding. I think a lot of people feed their sea monkeys too much. They get too eager and give them too much food and that will basically suffocate them and so they don't live for very long. Um, the other one is fast temperature fluctuations. So I would often try growing my sea monkeys here in New Zealand in the winter time and New Zealand is simply too cold for, New, uh, for sea monkeys during the winter. So what I do now is uh, during the colder months of the year, I have aquarium heaters that I put into the tank. It keeps the tank, the tank water nice and stable um, at its optimal temperature. And this helps a lot with, um, with survival rates and the survival of subsequent generations born into the tank. How many sea monkeys can a tank support? Um, this is a really interesting question and it's one that I've kind of been wondering about for a while. Um, so this sea monkey tank here, this ocean volcano, is a little bit larger than the average sea monkey tank. I think the volume of this is around 400 mils when usually they're closer to 300. In my experience, they can hold around 30 adults and a bunch of babies as well, but often those babies won't make it to adulthood. And I think uh, the main resource constraint there is simply space. So in my experience, it's around 30, but I think under absolute optimum ideal conditions, you could probably get it up to maybe 40. 
But yeah, I'd love to hear about your experience as well. So tell me how many sea monkeys do you guys have in your tank and what is the most that you've ever had in there at one time? Okay, so these last few questions were all asked by the same person on Reddit. Uh, what's the best way to heat the water and what is the ideal temperature? So the ideal temperature is somewhere around 26 degrees Celsius, which is 79 Fahrenheit. So if you live somewhere where it's quite warm, you won't need to use a heater or anything for the tank. But in my experience, especially here in New Zealand, a lot of the time using a heat source of some kind is necessary. Um, there's two different kind of heaters that I recommend you use. One is an under tank heat mat. Um, and that's really good for if you just need to raise the temperature by a couple of degrees, that works really well and it's an easy solution. But if your tank water is quite cold, maybe if it's below 20 degrees Celsius, I think you're much better off using a submersible aquarium heater. Uh, I personally use some small USB ones which work really, really well. And I'll leave a link down to that in the description for you. All right, the last question to, to finish off. Are air pumps necessary slash ideal? No, I don't think they're, they're necessary, but I definitely think they're ideal. And it's for two reasons. The first is the most obvious, and that's that it gives plenty of oxygen to the sea monkeys. Uh, the second reason, which is not quite as obvious, but I think probably the most important reason, is that it continually circulates the water and keeps the, the water moving within the tank, which means that any food particles in the water don't fall to the bottom of the tank and just sit there. They're constantly being moved around the tank, which means that it's easily accessible for the sea monkeys, especially the babies, to consume and eat. So in my experience, using an air pump will greatly help uh, with the survival of younger sea monkeys. So I personally always recommend that you have one going in the tank 24 seven. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this Q&A and if you'd like to see subsequent Q&A videos similar to this in the future. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask those down in the comments and I'll see you on the next one.